and work it loose and then gently remove it. Normally I would try to make the sprue a little straighter, but it is not critical, it doesn't matter. Now if you look at the other side of the mold, you can see you can see the mark of the sprue here. So get the mold flat. And I use a copper pipe and we're going to cut a pour hole straight through. Make sure you support the other side of the sand when you do this. Or it'll break your mold. And then you also want to create what's called a pop-up hole. Because as you're pouring it's difficult to see down that hole. So you create this hole here. And when you see this hole start to fill with bronze, you know that your mold is full. And I just use this slightly smaller stick to do that. And if you can gently poke while holding the other side of the mold. You want to uh, remove any detritus around these holes on the other side. Because you don't want anything falling in. And uh, then I have a very small spoon here. Which then I use to do some more carving. I go ahead and I carve a funnel out of the top so that I have a place to pull the sand, to pour the bronze that is. And do not scrape with your finger, but if you have loose pieces you can press them with your finger. Press them back in, press them down hard. Try to take out any hard edges. And again, down here I need to cut a channel to go from the sprue into the coin, so I will very gently carve a nice wide channel. that leads into the coin and I will cut that out later with a grinder. Okay. So now we have got a completed mold. And I make sure that you put the mold back on the same way you took it off, the frames together. And there we go. We can now pour bronze into this. And I'm going to put this back on this board so I can move it around. And that is a wrap for this section of the video. The next section will be about the furnace. Yeah, All right. yeah, so the this is our, our furnace design. This is a very practical furnace design. It's basically just a garbage can with uh, a refractory cement liner. And I'll include the uh, notes for how to make refractory cement in our notes on this video. It's basically just uh, Portland cement, sand, uh, uh, and uh, fire clay. And uh, there's one other ingredient, which I forget right now. <laughs> the, uh, the furnace has some fire bricks in it just because it's so much bigger than our crucible. We actually run this all the time without these fire bricks if uh, we're uh, using a bigger crucible. Today's crucible is going to be a ceramic one. I bought this online. But you can make a simple crucible out of a metal piece of pipe and an end cap. No problems. We uh, started with this crucible. This is our very first one. This furnace is fired with uh, liquid propane. Our last furnace was fired with uh, charcoal. The important part is that you have the liquid propane and a little bit of forced air. Right now we're using a weed burner that we got from Lowe's. And uh, next to that is a pipe that we have hooked up to a uh, stop vat on below. So this is going to put propane in, this is going to provide some forced air, and uh, we're just going to tune it so it gets nice and hot on the inside.
Hopefully Gamgar can get it off. Well, when we did this mold, we made a mistake. You're supposed to make sure that when you assemble these things, that the hinges and the snaps line up. That way you can take it apart before you pour it. In this case, we didn't do that, so I could not take the mold apart, and I did not want to recast it, so I re-make the mold, so I just cast in it. When you do that, the molten metal will cause some damage to the frames. Not a great deal. You can see it's happened several times before. If I had assembled it the right way, I'd have simply been able to unsnap the hinges, pull the frames away, and cast into the sand like this. And I would not have tarred up my frames anymore. So uh, you can let this sit for a while, or you can go at it with a hammer. It will be extremely hot, obviously, for a long time. little bit of cleanup and you can see we have an excellent cast the original plastic piece. We'll have to take this on to our grinder and, and cut it off here and grind off this extra down there but when we fish it up it'll be beautiful. After you've uh, after you're finished casting let's go ahead and smash up your lumps of sand. Get all the chunks up, add a little bit of water, and you're ready to cast again. You think you can uh, edit this clusterfuck into a decent video, Zach? Um, yeah. After you've uh, cut your piece free, you can give it a nice, uh, nice finish. This is one that's in the process of being finished. You see the shiny spots we made with... Uh, this cloth buffer and some buffing material. Go over and buff it, make it as shiny as you want. You can get down in there and work it with a Dremel. Uh, this is a different casting we made. We see we have some occlusions here. Go ahead and work that out with the Dremel tool. Today's cast is actually really high quality. If you want to take a close up of that, Zach. Very little in the way of the <laughs> 